Hello everyone, I am Edwin Hernandez, Grasshopper Specialist at Shape Diver. Welcome to the fourth episode of this video series where we are creating a table configurator with the use of Grasshopper and Shape Diver. In the last episodes, we created the table by using simple Grasshopper components and then we replaced those components with the use of C Sharp scripts that we created internally at Shape Diver to optimize the computation of our table and to optimize the meshing of our table. In this episode, we will concentrate on preparing our model for the final display. So we will apply texture coordinates, weld or unweld our meshes, and finally apply materials to give realism to our final product. So let's get started. So here we have our Grasshopper file. This Grasshopper file will be available down in the description. And here we have our table as mesh. So if we go Ctrl M, we can see how the table parts are being meshed, all the different polygons and vertex. I reorganized a bit the Grasshopper file, and the main change I did in respect to the last Grasshopper file was in the legs mesh, where I wanted to end up with a closed mesh. So here we can see that the top and the bottom of our mesh is capped, as we did with the B-wraps, where we use the cap component to close our B-wrap. So to do that, I simply added some segments to our base boundary curve so that when it is revolved to create the mesh, it actually starts from the center of our mesh. This is because we may add the tabletop with glass, so we will be able to see through and then we should have these legs cut so that we don't see a hole in there. Now we will add extra coordinates to our meshes, so to do that, there is different methods. One of them is that we support the plugin Human, in which you have the texture mapping components, box mapping, cylinder mapping, planar mapping, etc. So first of all, we have to explain what is the texture coordinate. So if we check this image, the texture coordinates in the simplest way to explain, is like if we were taking this mesh and putting it down on the floor, like we can see here with this Earth 3D model, that then is put on the floor and wrapped. The same happened here with this box, where you can see the box is unwrapped. And basically based on this unwrapped, our texture gets projected on it and then showed in the 3D model. And here you can see we have the texture of the earth, then it gets projected to our UV map, that is the unwrapped 3D model, and then that gets projected finally in the 3D model. There is different kind of projections. So we have a planar projections. It's like if we were looking at the mesh from one side only, and then we project all the texture from that side. So here you can see the plane, the sphere, the cylinder and the cube. And of course, because it is projected just from this side, then all the other sides that are not coplanar with our projection, then gets deformed. Then we have the cube projection. That is like if we had a cube, and then we start to project from the six sides of this cube. Then we have the cylindrical projection, which is the same concept. We have a cylinder, and then we start to project our texture on the 3D model based on that cylinder. And finally, we have the spherical projection. There is also a custom texture mapping where you actually place every single polygon of your mesh in the desired position where you want a specific part of the texture to be projected. So here, Human offers the same kind of texture mapping projections. Box mapping, cylinder mapping, planar mapping, spherical mapping, and of course, custom mapping, that is the most complex one. So for example, if we were to use the box mapping, we can input our legs in the mesh input and there are reference box in our box input. So we can go up box domain and the size of this box and the location will set our box mapping. So if we go for example a thousand then this will set the size of the texture and the way to test that would be by applying a texture to our legs so we would go to the shape diver plugin and then we can use the shape diver display geometry component then we can use one of the options for material. We have shape diver material or shape diver simple material. For this case, we will use the shape diver material just to display a texture so we can see how the texture was projected in our legs. However, we will go back to this part to apply the real materials that we want to use. Here we can use, for example, a texture shaker. So if we go to Google, if we go to texture shaker, we find these textures that are simply some numbers and colors that will represent how our texture is being mapped around the geometry. So if we go right click in the image and then we go copy image address, then we can put that in a panel and this URL is our texture. Here we can see how the texture is being projected in our legs. If we, for example, change the size of our texture to 500, then we can see the projection. 
Now here you can see some distortion of the texture and that's because we are using a box mapping. So we should be using something more similar to the shape of our geometry. So for example here our leg has a very organic shape whereas a box is a very orthogonal shape, it's a very linear shape. The box mapping would be good to use if you are creating for example a wall or a very orthogonal shape like for example the apron or the, maybe the tabletop however it would be different for the edges of the tabletop so instead of using the box mapping we could use the cylindrical mapping that is more similar to the actual shape of our leg but the most optimal way would be to actually create the custom mapping to actually set the texture map for every single vertex in our mesh so of course that's very complex to do but our C sharp component already does it automatically. So we have here the U texture size and the V texture size. This sets how big our texture is, but the actual coordinates are already set in this C sharp component. So if we use again the same texture size that we are using in the box mapping and we put that inside our UV size and then we input this mesh directly into our display component then we can see here how our texture is mapped based on the actual shape of our mesh then in that case we wouldn't need any box mapping on, or any of this kind of mapping however if you're using a different method to, to our C sharp component then of course the human components would be the solution we also have a component in shape diver called the shape diver texture transform that transforms the texture coordinates that already exist in a mesh. So first of all you have to set some texture coordinates and then if you need to apply extra transformations to those coordinates then you can do it with our component but you need first to set those texture coordinates. So for example here with our legs we already have texture coordinates so if we input this in our component and then for example we scale our texture coordinates and then we put 0.5 for example and then we input that in our display, then our texture coordinates were scaled twice. So the same happened if I go 0.1, for example, it's 10 times bigger, and the same can be done to the other side. So if you go 10, then that would say 10 times smaller, and you can see how our texture coordinates are scaled. However, this is not necessary for this model, as we will use directly the measurement of our texture size that we have here as an input. Then in the loft component that we use in the apron mesh and in the tabletop mesh, we also have the same input. So we have the UV textures. Again, here we also have the UV texture size. So we can use the same texture size input or if you want different sizes for the different parts, then you can, of course, put a different number. In this case, all of them will have a texture size of 500 units. So here we can see now all the parts of the table with texture coordinates. The only one that doesn't have the texture coordinates that we want is the caps of the tabletop because they are created not with our C-sharp but with the normal B-Wrap component. This is just a planar mesh, so we can use the planar mapping component. We input this mesh, we use the X, Y plane, and then we use the same texture size that we are using for all of the other meshes. We have here all the table with the desired texture coordinates. Now we can continue with the last input of our C sharp scripts, that is the wealth input. You can see it in the love mesh C sharp, but also in the polyline to rotational mesh C sharp. You may have used before the wealth component that Grasshopper has, the wealth mesh component, or even the Weaver Bird join meshes component that also has the possibility of welding the mesh. So, welding a mesh allows to create the effect that the mesh is smooth. So if we check this image, we can see that in this example, the mesh is not smooth because our vertex are not welded. So each of them has independent vertex normals. The normal is perpendicular to the mesh face. And the same happens with the other vertices. And that's why we have a sharp corner. However, if we weld the, those vertex, then we end up with a single normal that creates the effect that our mesh is smooth. Even though it is a sharp corner, it creates the effect that it is smooth. The effect is created by how this normal direction goes against the light source that we have in our render engine. 
and then that makes the difference between having a sphere where all the vertex are not well and then we have all these sharp corners or a sphere where all the vertexes are welded and then we have this smooth effect here in grasshopper the weld input is looking for a number because this number sets the angle in which two vertex are allowed to be welded so if we have a 90 degrees angle for example we may not want this to be welded because we want to see a sharp corner However, if we have a very open angle, we may want to weld it so that it looks smooth. This is important especially for the legs because the legs have a very organic shape. So if we check the legs, now the angle of tolerance for welding the vertexes is very open. So we can see that even 90 degrees angles are being welded because here you cannot differentiate between where the cap is and where the actual side is. So that's because our weld input is two multiplied P, 360 degrees. So if we go, for example, 0.5, multiplied p so that will be 90 degrees and then we input that in the weld and we can check again our leg and then we start to see the difference here we start to see how our caps actually differentiate from the sides because they are not welded anymore now we may want to reduce a bit more our welding and then we can use the same angle so in this case i'm using 0 0.3 multiplied p i can use this same angle in our tabletop side profile but for the apron, we do want a sharp corner because the apron is basically a rectangular piece of wood. So if we check our apron, we don't want this to happen. We want this to be completely sharp and not well. So that's why we have as default zero. So it is never welded and then we have sharp corners. Now we can continue with actually adding the texture that we want for our table. So for the texture, as I said before, we have the simple material and the material components. So the simple material just requires a color and a material index. The material index is a preset index that we have of preset materials at ShapeDiver. So if you go to app.shapediver.com and then you go to browse models, you can look for material you will find this shape diver material demo where you can see the material presets that we have and you can also find the index of that material so in this case for example we would like to use some wood material so we can find in our material presets the default wood for example then we can see here how that default wood looks and use this index to 500 in our simple material component so if we come here to grasshopper then we can add here 500 and that means that our tabletop will have that preset. This preset is not shown here in Grasshopper, it will be shown just until you upload it to ShapeDiver. The second option is to use the material component where you are actually creating a material from scratch. So you have to give everything, the color, the texture map, the metalness map, roughness map, bomb map. You don't have to give all of them, but of course the more information you give to your material, the better it will look. So for textures, we can go for textureheaven.com, for example, where you have a lot of textures that you can use for free. However, this is more for the gaming industry. So the second suggestion that I have is textures.com. Anyways, you can use any texture that you have. If you have already one available or you found one somewhere else, these are just suggestions that I'm giving. So textures.com give you 15 trades per day where you can download different textures. So for example, if we find one wooden texture for our tabletop, so for example, this wooden texture, you can find here the different maps for our texture. So we have the texture map, the normal map, roughness map, ambient occlusion map, and all of them are seamless. So that's important. They have to be seamless so that when you apply them to your tree model you cannot see where the texture is being repeated so these textures get repeated along the entire 3d model and if you have a scene between them then you will see exactly where the next repeated texture is placed and you don't want that to happen you want that to be seamless so you can download these images they allow you to download it in 512 by 512 or 124 by 124 i wouldn't download larger images than that because that's also something that affects the performance if you have a very big image that you apply to your models then that image has to be also downloaded it into the browser so you want your image to be as compressed as possible and now we need to host these images somewhere because we need the link of this image that is the one that is going to be used in the 3d model so for testing purposes i use ingur but you can put it in your own hosting service in aws in your own servers in this case it's just for testing purposes so we can just upload in ingur.com we, we can upload these images and then we can go right click, copy image address, we go to our grasshopper model, then we put this address into a panel and then we can check how it looks. 
The same we do for the other maps. So we go for the normal map and the roughness map. And then we can do the same with the other parts of our table. But what if we want to give the user different options of materials? There's two ways to do that. We either use a value list. Then in this list we can, for example, give them the option to go for wood or glass or textile or any other option. This is an option, so of course you would add this and then put it into a filter so that you can sort between different URLs that you have inside your grasshopper. So you will have a list of URLs that are picked depending on the material that was selected by the user. So this will be a drop-down menu that will appear in Shapediver. But there is another option that is more open and normally is what we prefer to do here at Shapediver, that is to use the Shapediver text input, where actually the users can put their own URLs. So they will get a text input where they can copy paste the URL where the texture image is being host. And if then this table is being added into a website, then the web developers can actually manage which textures are being provided to the user and they don't have any limitations to do that. So they can put any texture that they want there and you don't have to change anything in the Grasshopper file itself. So if we double click on this component, we can see here the default text that is being used. So for example, we could use instead the texture URL add it as our default. The max length is the max amount of characters that our text can have in this input. So in this case, we will go to the maximum because we just want a URL to be applied there. And then we rename this because this name is important so that we know exactly what this parameter is affecting. And then we can do the same for the other channels, for the other texture maps. Remember to change the names of all your parameters and to put a meaningful name to it so that the programmers, when they are going to integrate this table in a website, they know exactly what they are changing when they send a URL to this parameter. So the tabletop texture or the tabletop roughness or the tabletop normal map. And then for the opacity, we can add a slider between 0 and 1 in case we want to make the tabletop glass, for example. Now for our legs, it would be a little bit different because as we explained in the first episode, we want our legs to be able to have more than one material as we have here in our reference where one part can be wood and another part can be glass or one part can be one kind of wood and the other part can be other kind of wood. So for that, we will need a list of materials because we have more than one material and a tree in which each branch has one material. So in this case, it's because we have two branches and means we need two materials defined here. So we need a copy of the same material settings for our second material. And now we merge our two materials into a list. So in this case, I made the first material wood, but the second material glass or acrylic. And just to be clear again, our display component works by inputting a tree of meshes and a list of materials. So you have to have the same amount of branches in your tree and the same amount of materials in your list. So if you have two branches here, each branch will take the corresponding material based on the index of that branch. And this is the end of this episode. We have now applied texture coordinates and materials to our entire model. In the next episode, we will explore more the texturing of our model, applying different textures to the different parts of our table. We will also add export components and prepare our model for the final upload at Shapediver. If you like this video and you learned something new, please click on the like button down below. And if you don't want to miss the next episode, please subscribe so you get the notification when the next video gets released. So see you next time.